Oh, that taste is not gonna go away for a while. Guess what, kids? It's here! Doom Eternal! Four years since the last one, after a delay to, uh, I guess iron out the kinks. Let me be very clear about this game and its presentation right now. As with most id games, Doom Eternal is a tactical powerhouse. A game that never once during my 14 hours with it hitched or stuttered or crashed or even ran less than ideally. Not once. No! You are not putting a side plot in my Doom Eternal video! I've been working on this and I've been waiting for this for too long! We should marvel at that because this game is unrelentingly intense. Beautiful to look at, 100% triple-A sheen, so, so smooth. As soon as you start the game, get ready for some fan service. That title music is straight out of classic Doom. I'm gonna get this out of the way now, Mick Gordon has outdone himself, and the reservations I had about the Doom 2016 soundtrack, which allegedly someone told Mick Gordon to make less metal? Maybe that person got fired for gross incompetence because Doom Eternal soundtrack goes in hard and never stops. and the intro. Yes. Doom guy is just chilling on his Justice League watchtower, and he's got a binary fusion generator of his own, if you know what I'm saying. As a veteran Doom player, I'm gonna start this game on ultraviolence. I'm sure I won't regret that. The first level introduces you to the mechanics, and you get a chainsaw early, like really, really early. There's a reason for that, because the mechanics of the chainsaw have changed a little bit this time around, and it has to do with the fact that you can only hold 16 shells? 16 shells?! But you can eventually upgrade it to 24? 24?! This was done, I'm told, to encourage players to switch weapons a lot because they'll be constantly out of ammo, so they have to think tactically, you know? And in the first level, you get the shotgun, the chainsaw, and the heavy machine gun. There's no pistol anymore. No infinite ammo weapon for you. We're doubling down on resource management. I gotta say, I like the shotgun better than the one in 2016. Much punchier sound, better feel. Which is good, because you're gonna be using it for the rest of the game. Yes, the slot 1 weapon stays relevant, even late game. Which I'll talk about in the spoiler section of this video, which will probably be around the 2-3 hour mark. There is a lot to go over. Doom Eternal is a long-ass game. Like, my playthrough took about, let's see, leaving out times when I was taking notes or when I was replaying a couple levels for a collectible. I'm gonna guess I spent about 14 hours on the main campaign. It's a lot. The scenery is incredible. The monsters are running amok. They're fucking infighting. Infighting! The UI, the map, the control, the animation, everything is a refinement of the last game. You start on some kind of wooden ship that you later learn is flying around the city, you know, to get your bearings because this isn't quite like Doom 2016, the glory kills are still there. You have this new wrist-mounted blade that makes them a little faster and is, you know, fucking awesome. The enemies seem tougher, at least the throwaway ones that the codex entries call fodder. Like the basic zombie can't be slapped into its glory kill state with one hit anymore? You gotta shoot it. There's a few of these simulated training room things, but don't worry, it's not like Rage 2, you are not gonna see many of these. First thing you're doing is going after a Hell Priest, one of several bad dudes who do bad things and are integral to the demonic consumption of Earth. My soul remains guarded! You can Oh my god! And then you just jump off the ship and take no falling damage, no impact compensation bullshit, just straight into- Oh my god, that's the biggest demon I've ever seen! Is that the icon of sin just walking around? Man, the world is in some serious trouble, let's get some sticky bombs. 
Let me tell you something right now. You might start with the auto shotgun upgrade. The game gave me two upgrade bots before I hit real trouble so I could get both shotgun mods. You need that sticky bomb upgrade for the shotgun, not just because it's awesome, but because of how the monster weak points work. All the pickups are extra glowy so you can never ever miss them. The sound design is exceptional for the most part. I actually don't like the headshot sound. I think it's a little too cartoony. But now we're in it. It's hell on earth. Look, that's the one level name. You remember Doom 2, Hell on Earth? It's time to save the world, kids. Time to bring the pain. You'll notice a lot of tutorial messages. A lot of them. The Arachnotron has a weak point, and the game will tell you about it several times, as well as the weak points for other demons and how to defeat those demons, and the bosses. Yes, the game straight up tells you how to defeat the bosses, like, really? You can turn off the tutorial messages, of course, but that still seems like a little bit much. Fifteen minutes into this game, the pain starts. The Arachnotron is back, and it has a weak point. Shoot a sticky bomb onto its turret and it'll disable it. Then it'll rush you in melee. And it doesn't go down with another shell or two, no. And I'm out of ammo, so I gotta chainsaw him. Or not, because I don't have three charges. The chainsaw generates one charge on its own, and each gas pickup gives you another. You need to learn real fast that this game is not gonna give you ammo. You have to make it. You have to constantly chainsaw something during the combat, or else you're just gonna have low ammo flashing on your screen the whole time. Back to the Arachnotron, how about a blade through the brain? I'm so conflicted, I'm annoyed I had to stop in the middle, yet killing it was so good! After that battle, it fades out and cuts to another camera to show a gate opening, a thing that Doom Eternal adds as opposed to the last game, and I get the feeling that this game is trying to idiot-proof itself so it'd be accessible to everyone, and I get that, but this stuff isn't skippable like the cutscenes. It's boring and it sucks, but I guess it doesn't detract too much from the rest of the game. Whatever, let's move on. Wall climbing? Okay, sure, I guess. It's not implemented badly. A one-up? I saw these in gameplay footage before and I was concerned. I didn't like the idea of a live system and the way it's implemented here is if you die, you instantly respawn instead of loading a checkpoint. Sure, okay, I'm not against that. This game's getting a little arcadey. I go into the subway and there's fireball shooters like I'm in Rise of the Triad or something. And they don't seem to hurt the monsters at all, just me. Okay. Cleansing of Earth is a necessary step on the path to a brighter tomorrow. Okay, I understood the holograms in Doom 2016, but these? They're obviously demon holograms. They're everywhere, but who made these? What demons in the IT or production departments made these? Now an arachnotron just walks through those fireballs? Jesus Christ! It's a hallway! I can't avoid its attack! Holy shit, Doom Eternal! Slow your roll! This is level one! And also, he was shooting at me through a wall. Fucking roll! Oh yeah, and I die and use my extra life and it's ready for a glory kill. I can't even start to list the number of times that happened. I don't know if there's some damage done when you respawn, that might be it. Honestly, at times it's so chaotic I can't follow it. I feel old and slow. More equipment? That's right, a grenade launcher that sits on your shoulder. Cool. The Cacodemon, holy shit, he charges right at you to bite your head off. And in this game, when you wail on demons for long enough, they start losing pieces and degrading before your eyes. It's so cool. I remember seeing that originally in Quake 2, where it would change skins to look more damaged, but here the entire mesh starts falling apart. I cannot overstate the quality of the craftsmanship on display here. And the way to stagger a cacodemon is, are you ready for this? You shoot a grenade into its mouth. <laughs> Overall, the monsters seem way more aggressive than before, crowding you, firing anywhere between two and four times the projectiles they used to, and faster, and there's twice as many monsters in this game, so at any given time than in Doom 2016, it seems like, so that's four projectiles for every monster times two, and it never, never lets up! Tentacles now! These things just hang around on the floor, or under liquid, and pop out and fuck them, they can take a flying fuck into a jet engine. You want to get a sense of how Doom Eternal's fights are going to go, here's the first taste, right here in this wobbly skyscraper. The first place Doom Eternal decides to take its training wheels off. I wasn't ready. enemies will rush you hard, way harder than last time. They crowd you. 
Jesus Christ! Thank God the loading times are short. Another Cacodemon? Another Arachnotron? It's the first level, Duma Turtle! Holy shit! Are you sure this isn't a sequel to Plutonia? As soon as I'm addressing one problem, like a bunch of projectiles coming at me, I have another one on deck, ready. It's ultraviolence, so I guess I asked for this? The first quarter to third of this game, if you're new to it, can be summarized by this right here. Low health warning, low ammo warning. We all said Doom 2016 was unbalanced and too easy, and now we're paying for it. Oh my god, what is with all these bottomless pits? You don't die or take fall damage, it teleports you back and takes some health away, but why? Why are they here? It's all over the place! Was this city a mile above sea level? Is this Denver? Jesus, give me a fucking break! I'm not complaining that the game is too hard, I'm on ultraviolence. Ultraviolence should be hard. The game tells you in tutorials and messages what you have to do, use the chainsaw a lot, it's bound to its own key, and it's an instant attack now. It might as well be one of your hands for how much you're gonna need to use it, and you will have to integrate it into your play or else you're gonna have a bad, bad time. Doom Eternal really hammers home that it's not gonna be a walk in the park. You're gonna die. The demons are deadlier than they've ever been. You think Doom Guy cares? How can this be? No man can pass through the gate! It is... This stops nothing! You will not save them from their judgment. Yeah, shut up, whatever you guys are. It's here you're introduced to the main antagonist of the game, Con Maker. Okay, Katie, get it ready. Get it ready. Now. Khan! You wanna stop seeing that clip? Stop naming you bad guys Khan. Khan Maker wants you to stop saving humanity because she's using hell and the population of Earth for her own purposes. Doom Guy doesn't give a fuck. He turns his back and walks out into the portal onto his giant space castle, which is pretty awesome, I'm not gonna lie. And the level tallies up combat awards and collectibles, of which there are about 10, 20,000. Little Funko Pops of all the monsters, lore stuff, little cheat code discs and weapon mods. Just tons and tons of stuff for you to find. If you get all those cheat discs, you can unlock Doom 1 on a terminal inside of the Doom Slayer's collectible room. If you enter a password, you can unlock Doom 2. Steam didn't include the classic wads that you need to run, so I had to put those in myself. There's this weird filter that makes it look like it's on a CRT monitor, and if you use the chainsaw... Steam did eventually update them with the BFG edition versions of the wads, and you now open and close doors to load the super shotgun. There's also a reward screen, which I think is part of Bethesda Net stuff, so naturally most of the time it just sat there loading them and not functioning properly. You know, because Bethesda? Nice job, Bethesda. You didn't send Civi a review code, your servers don't work, your fucking DRM was, uh, cracked? Because you included the non-DRM executable in the game files? Top notch, it just works! On the space station, you got Vega back, glad I backed him up, giving you the flame belch attachment, which is also a crucial game mechanic that you'll need to use, because when you light things on fire and then shoot them, they drop armor for some reason. Doom logic. Sentinel crystals to upgrade your max ammo, health, or armor like the Argent cells in the last game, so of course the first one I go for is health because it's only slightly more of an issue than only having 16 shells, but the second one, oh, uh, the second one goes to ammo, so I can have 18 shells? Are you fucking kidding me? So you get to the next level and it's of course gorgeous. How in the fuck are they gonna get this running on a Switch without making it look like a PS1 era Silent Hill game? Runes. Oh yeah, I remember those. Let's see. Oh, is that some slow-mo? Yes, please. We're running around killing demons, grabbing onto poles and wall climbing a lot, like a lot. There is entirely too much platforming in this game, at least in the early sections. I'm not opposed to some platforming, not at all. You don't have the dash power yet until later in this level, which is really important, and when I revisited this level later and had those things, it sure made a difference. The game eventually gives you two dashes that recharge almost instantly, so again, it becomes less of a problem. What you're looking at here, this is the same level, you're just also in hell for half of it. And look at these spinning fire traps, the platforms that drop when you jump onto them. People compared this to Mario, as any platforming is going to be compared to 
of that, but the movement, the three dimensions, the fact that I feel like the game is laughing at me when I fail, the precision you need in order to do some of these things even in the early game feels more like the kind of ribbing cruelty of Crash Bandicoot to me. A lot of these sections aren't too bad, like I can breeze through some of them, no problem, as long as I know what I'm looking for, and other times I'm supposed to flip around on monkey bars, reorient myself in the air, and make jumps that seem designed to be barely doable. Or maybe I climb a wall in the right place and it throws me off anyway. At least you get a plasma gun. The plasma gun is a lot more useful in this game because you counter shields with it, and when you knock somebody's shield out, it doesn't just lower. No, it explodes! Awesome! Won't be long until you run into some more bullshit that absolutely doesn't belong in this game. That's this purple slime. Instead of doing cool shit like animating the Statue of Liberty with it, you move slower, you can't jump, dodge, or really do much of anything, and there are also these goddamn tentacles hiding under it. And they bring it back later too, they know exactly what they're doing, and they sick Hell Knights on you while you're in the slime that makes it so you can't move, so you can't do the thing you absolutely need to do in order to dodge a Hell Knight's attack. Let me tell you, for the first few hours of this game, I was getting progressively more miserable. Wondering what the designers were thinking because because everything in Doom Eternal is purposeful. It's not like they didn't know what they were doing. They reintroduce Revenants, which haven't changed much from Doom 2016 other than there being way more of them. New monsters show up, the Gargoyle, who's like a flying imp and should be chainsawed whenever possible. So about halfway through the second level, you collect something called a Sentinel Battery, which you use to open up other areas in your space castle, which have some interesting things in them. For one, you're gonna need a lot more of those batteries because they open a bunch of other doors. You need a pair of them to open anything. Behind these doors is stuff you'll encounter in other levels. Slayer crystals, weapon mods, suit tokens. Let me just stop for a minute and contemplate this. The space castle has its own currency and it locks you out of certain rooms. Oh, what's this? Uh, I know which door I'm opening first. The space station has towers. The stairs are broken on this one and I have to power my way up. What, is Dracula up there? In case you don't get enough demon fighting in your demon fighting game, there's even a practice arena. The game gives you the ice bomb attachment now too, so going into the third mission, which is another huge, beautiful, and expertly crafted map, because of course it is, you see what this game is doing to me? It's making me describe good things like they suck. It's been grinding me into the fucking dirt, but now I have the flame belch, the grenades, the ice bomb, the dash, the shotgun, machine gun, plasma gun. This level gives you the rocket launcher and really, really starts kicking my ass. Mancubus shows up, he seems even tankier than ever, my god. And these snakes that whip you and they slither around so fast, I'll give them credit for how well animated this is, but goddamn, they're just murdering me. On the Revenant and the Mancubus, you're supposed to shoot the weak points, I mean, the game never stops telling you about that. The Revenants in particular are barely a problem after you blow off their cannons. The Mancubus, uh, I don't want to be anywhere near them and I don't want to have to spend all my damn time sniping their cannons. But then, but then... There's a bit where you get the super shotgun that I like. I won't spoil it here. You may have seen it in the, uh, well, all of the promotional material. It has a grappling hook that attaches to enemies. Grappling hook, double barrel, meat, slow-mo, meat. Oh, God, this is too good. Here's the deal. Doom Eternal needs to introduce all its mechanics, all its new stuff, all the stuff that's changed since the last game. And the player has to get eased into all of this, and it's pretty overwhelming at first. But over the next hour or so, my misery started to go away. Everything started clicking. Everything the game was trying to do came into focus, and finally I had everything I needed to get the most out of it. And now the combat, more frantic than ever, the monsters more vicious, everything is designed around you having the abilities that you now have. And it starts to blow Doom 2016 out of the water. The game starts to kick all kinds of ass up and down across dimensions. I hate to say this, but... I had to get good. Shout out to the people who abused that term so hard that I feel like an asshole for even thinking it. From here on out, it's spoiler talk, so be warned. I took a break from the unrelenting intensity of Doom Eternal to look at one of the pre-order bonuses, which is Night Dive's official re-release of Doom 64, and it's great. Like, it feels better and more complete than Doom 64 EX does, the movement feels like it's been tweaked, it looks a little better, though for the default Doom 64 experience, turn the gamma down, there you go. It's a whopping 96 megabyte download, which is weird since Doom 64 is way smaller than that. It's kind of funny because almost 40 megabytes of it is dedicated to splash screens. One for Bethesda, one for id, one for the Kex 
Force Engine, one for Night Dive, and one for FMOD. Jesus, I get it. There are new maps, which is more than I would have expected, but totally welcome. They're fun, too. A little more crowded with monsters in the regular Doom 64, as to be expected for a new expansion pack for an old game. I played them on Watch Me Die, so maybe that's got something to do with it. The levels are pretty heavy on shotgunners and pain elementals, so be warned. A solid release all around, and the best way to currently play Doom 64 as far as I'm concerned. Good stuff. Seeing Doom 64 get a re-release is like seeing someone write a great injustice. So let's get into some story stuff, and get one thing out of the way right goddamn now. Doom Slayer is 100% confirmed to be OG Doom Guy. Found and recruited by the Night Sentinels, having gone completely insane after fighting demons for so long. This is first hinted at at a line in the second level that gave me chills. You are but one man. They are no longer your people to save. I swear they show his face in this game just so he can look pissed off. That line implies that the Doom Slayer feels a responsibility to the human race. That he is human. And that there was a time when he was responsible for saving the human race, and that he's gonna do that again no matter what these angel wing dicks say about it. Don't believe me? We found him in the valley, just outside the castle walls. He was badly wounded, and wearing this. A lot of this exposition is contained within a single level when you go to Sentinel Prime to track down another one of those Hell Priests. They also want Origin Energy, and if humanity has to go extinct to help them out, then that's what's gonna happen. You know, unless one of their own gave a human godlike power at some point in the past because he was so good at killing things. Take it. It will give you strength. You know, you sound just like a dude I know who put his brain in a robot body. I pity the humans. I do. This is a hard role to play. But I too have a world to save. Without their souls, there can be no hell energy, and the Argent will cease to flow. I cannot allow this to happen. Yeah, Samuel Hayden ran the same kind of shit by me in the last game. It's not gonna work. You know, you even kinda look like him. Then I will return to you what the demons took from you so long ago. Daisy? Yeah, this whole level dumps backstory onto you through dialogue and codex entries. It's cool, I guess. I stopped to read all about the history of Argent Denur, the Sentinels, and how the Doom Slayer rose in their ranks to be a well-respected demon killer, better than any of the other Sentinels, able to prove himself in the combat arena of... Oh. Oh no. Oh no. There's some very light but noticeable cringe this time around. Like the Doom guy talking and actually quoting the Doom comic, that's... There's probably some voice actors that can sell bad dialogue, but they didn't hire one for this game and they play up the Doom guy as basically a god to the point where there are some audio logs that actually sound like they're recorded on a cell phone by a desperate scientist but... His fury surpassing their own. He is faster, more relentless. I believe him now to be more than just a man. He is Doom. Oh my god. And don't even get me started oh, on Oh, hey, the... Sidney. Hi, Cancer Mouse. Did you get the social commentary going on? Certain people were very- Oh, dear God, this is what my life is now, isn't it? It's cringe and radioactive mice and occasionally a little flaying to spice things up. Now, Simi, on college campuses, kids today are oh, too Oh, man, soft. college kids I are more left-wing than the rest of the population. Holy shit, when did that start? All the people who watch my show are boomers, on. probably, like 65 and, and older. I bet they really hate it. Ah, oh, kids, it wasn't painful forever. Just like in the last game, you gotta get yourself some gear and upgrade it. The weapons, oh. The heavy machine gun is a bit of a letdown and is mostly for sniping with that scope mod. The chain gun no longer has a wind-up, so you just get the mobile turret and you have the best of both worlds. The rocket launcher is a little slow, almost identical to the last games with the, uh... Mastery shrapnel taken out, but okay. The Gauss cannon no longer has siege mode and it's called a ballista. It has that precision shot thing from before, but now that also attaches an explosive. The siege mode is 
replaced by a huge wave of energy, that's pretty nice, but the frantic combat kind of makes it hard to charge up any kind of attack. The super shotgun, not quite as OP as before, but like the meat hook can be mastered. So then it's also on fire, and when things are on fire, they drop armor, so... Oh my god. God, that's beautiful. The shotgun has that auto-fire mod, right? But for that to be any good with the limited ammo, you need to master it, and then it's perfect for taking on groups of small enemies because they drop shotgun ammo when they die. The BFG is still the BFG, but now you can only hold two shots and it doesn't bind to a key. It costs 30 argent cells to fire, which is weird. The pickups are BFG cells, so shouldn't you just use one? See, the game also has the Unmaker, the real BFG. Remember when they had an Unmaker in Doom 64? Well, now Doom Eternal has one, and it's totally Gen Z it by adding an unnecessary Y to the name. And getting it is no easy task. What you have to do to get the Unmaker is get six keys. You can get one inside of six of the levels hidden behind Slayer Gates. Slayer Gates take you to combat arenas that are even more brutal than the standard ones, going so far as to introduce monsters early. You get those six keys and unlock the Unmaker just in time for the point of no return part of the campaign, where it won't let you go back to the hub area until you've finished. The levels progress linearly, but you can go back using a mission select screen. So what does the Unmaker do? Basically, it's kind of like the Doom 64 weapon, except instead of lasers, now you know what, it's the spread gun from Contra. Certainly not bad, very useful in that last chapter, let me tell you. Slightly more ammo efficient than the BFG, though that really doesn't say much. Yeah, around level 4 I turned the difficulty down to hurt me plenty because... It does get easier when you find the rhythm of the game's combat, but who has that kind of time? People in quarantine? I did go into the master levels in UV and that's going okay, I guess. Doom Eternal is full of moments. Little moments like finding Samuel Hayden again. We, uh, we don't know how to access his main cortex. It's all alien. We couldn't figure it out. We have to, uh, prepare for his careful extraction. We were given specific orders. His life signal is barely readable. And this scheme to get deep under Mars' surface by shooting Mars with a giant orbital BFG? Just shoot a hole into the surface of Mars. <laughs> Once you get over the game's learning curve, it's mostly awesome combat broken up by occasionally irritating platform sections. You're gonna be too busy dealing with new monsters. Pain elementals are back. Fuck them. Barons of Hell are now fireborn barons. Cool. Oof. Tyrants are cyber demons in everything but name. Archviles come back and shoot fire and spawn monsters and buff existing monsters. However, his glory kill is my favorite. Like a few of the other monsters, the Archvile has a shield that you can destroy with a blood punch. 
which is, you know what, Blood Punch should tell you everything you need to know about it. Save for the returning Cyber Mancubus who turns into a regular Mancubus with one Blood Punch, the game tells you to Blood Punch his armor off, but then he always splatters that toxic green shit everywhere? What's a Doom Hunter? Who cares? It's a tank. It's also the first boss, and it didn't help my early game saltiness when after fighting the first one, the game made me fight two more. But none of them are as devious or deadly as the Marauder. Yeah, you remember in the trailer you had that guy who was all like, you were nothing. This motherfucker right here. He's a Night Sentinel that chose to serve Con Maker instead. He can only be hit in very small windows when his eyes glow green or else he puts a shield up. The BFG does basically fucking nothing to him. He sends some kind of ghost dog after you. I was just gonna use the regular ghost dog movie, but then I found this and went kind of down a rabbit hole with it. And his lucky guardian angel <laughs> is one of the few friends he can truly count on. Good morning, Dad. Morning. Look. What the fuck? He shotguns you, tosses fucking Argent axes? Oh, he is the absolute worst. He's taken the crown from the arch vial. Fuck him and the ghost horse he rode in on. If you want an effective strategy against the Marauder, travel back in time and prevent Id from putting him in the game. Other than that, when his eyes go green, hit him with the super shotgun or the ballista. Or both. So there was that part I didn't want to spoil before when you get the super shotgun, which you do by possessing a revenant. I don't know, it was a nice little distraction, a welcome change of pace for a few minutes. I did end up pretty much maxing everything out and I did get all the cheat discs. I can't stop and show you each one individually, that would take forever, so here's all of them at once. Maker wants to start some shit. You killed all her hell priests and saved the world, so she decides to resurrect the Icon of Sin, which is a bad, bad idea. Not just because Doom Guy shows up, stabs it in the heart, which is... I knew from the start of this game I'd have to kill that big bastard again, might as well fuck her over in the process. She's looking for a fight too, and she saps a few of my lives with this Floris Lava bullshit. Other than that, the rocket launcher seems to work well for taking her health down. Again, this has unhurt me plenty, so your experience may be different. There's one weapon I haven't mentioned, the Crucible. You don't get much ammo for it, but my god, it is another insta-kill weapon that can down cyber demons. I'm sorry, tyrants. And you need it because the game goes all out in the final level, back on Earth heading for the Icon of Sin. And if you thought he was a problem when he was just a wall, the Icon of Sin took all of my lives. I was down to nothing before I stopped, breathed, assessed the situation, remembered what the game had been telling me to do this whole time. Run around, chainsaw, resupply, glory kill, get health, use the crucible because you don't have time to deal with these monsters, take health, resupply, run, shoot off the armor, shoot off the body parts under the armor. And then, it's over. No, it's just over. There's some narration. And you will be their savior. Your strength will be their shield. And your will, their sword. You remain unbroken. For your fight is eternal. It's kind of a shit ending, but at least it doesn't sequel bait. Unless you count saying that he's gonna be fighting demons forever. For better or worse, Doom Guy is a superhero now. Many look to the Slayer now for answers, but his whereabouts remain unknown. Now the Slayer sits in his space castle watching over the world as it rebuilds, hoping no one is dumb enough to try and invade Earth again. 
Honestly, I have no idea where this series can go from here. How can you make it any faster or more frantic? It's not possible! But for now, I think I'm content to blast the shit out of demons in this for a while longer. So the next time the Earth is in trouble, they just gotta call the Doom guy. Question. How do we call him? He gave us a signal! 